Hi everyone, I am Kim with Abundant Life Tarot and I want to thank you so much for joining me. And we are going to discuss in this video my death year for 2020. And this is the journal session. Um, so stay tuned if you want to hear a little bit more. And I also invite you to get your favorite beverage at this point, pause, because I'm going to do a little bit of story time. I'm going to be reading excerpts from my journal, my depth year journal. So stay tuned. All right, so I write a journal. I have a journal. This is devoted to my depth year experience. And I also have spreadsheets, as many of you know. We'll do a spreadsheet update later on. Um, I can't do it right now because many of my decks are kind of like parsed here, parsed there. There's some decks in the United States with my parents at their house. There's some decks here, a few decks here, and then I have some decks on their way to me. So once everything kind of settles, I kind of figure out what's what, where's what, then I will go ahead and do an update on my spreadsheets. But we are going to take a stroll down memory lane with my depth year journal. As you can see, I tapped it again. And I did a similar thing, um, I think it was like June or July of 2020, kind of doing a stop point and reading journal entries of my process of doing a depth year. And let's talk a little bit more about what a depth year is. So at least for me, I had decided that I wanted to kind of do a pause on the number of deck purchases I was making, purchasing new a tarot and oracle decks. Now, 2020 <laughs> was quite the year to try to do that, right? But it actually, it was perfect because in doing that death year, it opened up some space for me to think about other things that may not have been like, I may not have been super thrilled with or happy with that actually I was disenchanted with and needed to make a change. So much so that I think that if I was full on shopping, full on wrapped up in the collecting experience of my decks, I may have missed this important moment. And that moment is I made a decision to quit working after 20 plus years. I mean, I've been working since I was 14. So technically 25 years I've been working. But you know, if you want to count my adult years, we could say 21 ish years. So um, I made a decision to end that type of work and start to work for myself and to sell my home in California and relocate to the Dominican Republic with my husband and my daughter. And all of that came about um, after the pandemic or, uh, you know, during and after, like, I mean, we're still very much in it. I'm recording this March 10th, 2021. And we're just now starting to be able to come back out into the world. Excuse me as I sip my beverage. This is a treat. Um, I try to drink a lot of water if I can with all this humidity. I digress. Um, but the depth year not only helped me go deeper with the decks I have, but it helped me go deeper into myself and realizing there were some pockets of unhappiness that had been there for a long time that I had not even paid attention to until the 2020 pandemic and until my 2020 death year. So for that, I am eternally grateful for it. And I'm so excited about where I am now that, you know, yeah, we went through some highs and serious lows in 2020. 2021 is, is already feeling a lot better for me. So Many of you know, I relocated. Uh, I landed here January 4th, 2021 from the United States, Calif California, United States to the Dominican Republic or Los Terrenos Dominican Republic. And it's been such a change. I've had to definitely readjust my expectations about things 
and shipping decks is not as easy as I would like. I mean, anyone who probably lives on an island knows there's certain considerations you have to think about. Customs, if it's international shipping, which it more than likely will be now at this point. I was spoiled in the United States. I didn't have to worry about that so much because I, more often than not, I bought decks either in the United States, Canada, um, maybe Australia, and then oftentimes uh, Great Britain. So, you know, those channels of shipping have a relationship and it was easier, especially within the United States, to ship, buy decks, to, to do all of that commerce, right, that comes with collecting decks. But then the pandemic hit and there was all sorts of issues, you know, with me receiving things and shipping out things and getting lost this past year, which was kind of upsetting for me, but I won't go there right now. And then moving to another country and realizing, oh, I just can't, you know, pay a cheaper shipping and have it like that. Now I have to be a little strategic. I have a wonderful shipper who is always trying to make sure I'm not paying exorbitant like customs fees or going through excessive rigmarole with customs. Um, but nevertheless, it's a slow process. So I have to be really thoughtful in 2021 with my purchases. But that's a good thing because let me tell you about my 2020 death year. It was supposed to be a no buy year, right? But let, let's keep it real. It was a low buy year. It was certainly a low buy year and I could see it in my spreadsheets con like with concrete numbers that I had paid considerably less. Let's just say normally I pay 15 to 2000 per year per US or let me say 2000 1500 to $2000 or US dollars per year on decks, procuring decks, collecting decks, what have you. So I'm spending that normally without a depth here. And I think I end up spending like, like four or something, 400 some odd US dollars in 2020. Um, many of the decks that I did receive were gifts or like not winnings, but like when I went to the tarot symposium, there were complimentary decks that were given to me. Friends gifted me decks. Thank you, friends. I love you so much. You now give me even like you just give me that. That was just something like only only people who collect decks understand. Like it almost feels like only other collectors can really buy me a gift at this point because I don't really want nothing else. Nothing else. I don't want a bottle of perfume. I don't want, I don't want no chocolates. I want a deck. So my friends and folks that I work with in the industry, they gifted me decks. So that was super helpful with my death year, but not really because I'm like, I'm actually supposed to be shrinking my decks. So I'm supposed to be downsizing. Speaking of downsizing, I was supposed to be doing major downsizing even before I, I like really knew and made the decision that we were going to sell the house and we we're going to move to a new country. But this past, like in 2019, I just intuitively knew like it's time to downsize. It's time to start selling things off because something's happening here. Little did I know. I was going to relocate to another country for a while and go live abroad for a while and see what that life is like. But, oh, now we know. But uh, downsizing was also happening in 2020 for me. Yes, I was receiving gifts from people who were kind and generous and sent me decks. Yes, I bought a few decks, not as many as I normally do in past years. But certainly, you know, to the tune of 400 some odd dollars. I'm pretty sure that's the amount close to it. Um, and when I finally do a spreadsheet updates video, you'll, you know, we can talk about that. We'll see if I was close or not. But um, yeah, I, um, I have to say downsizing was an interesting thing. Fortunately, I have a son. My oldest son is really into decks like I am. He, he's an Aquarius son like me. He is my mini me in that way. And so he took some decks and whatever he could carry in luggage back to Atlanta because he, re he moved to Atlanta from California when he moved out of our home. 
So he took some decks. He took quite a few. And then I sold quite a few to my favorite bookstore, my independent bookstore out in California. And then the rest I kept. And so it was an interesting year for me. And the decks that I got, whether they were gifted or whether they were what I purchased, were all super special and, and really attuned to where I was in my life, my collecting habits, my collection. And that also is where I do a friendly little plug on my website. There is a free course called Choosing Your Next Deck, Curating Your Collection. And it was born out of my experience of my death year. I have to be honest with you, it was. I went through some highs and lows. I get emotional about it in 2020. And I'm going to read some excerpts. And I should have mentioned to you earlier, you may need to get you may need to get uh, your favorite beverage so you can just chill out. And I may have to do this in two parts if this video goes too long. But I'm going to read some excerpts. And I was reading them as I was like selecting potential excerpts to select to read. And I was getting choked up because I was in the middle of an active, depressive, anxiety-filled episode, several of them in 2020. And I get choked up now because I haven't really had those episodes. Not to say that that won't happen, but in relocating here, it just hasn't happened. Even though I've been through high stress stuff of like flying, I'm not a fan of flying, but going through all the rigmarole of getting here and getting set up, you know, this is our second temporary spot till we move to our more permanent spot. And it's kind of stressful, you know, you're enrolling your child in a new school and my two oldest kids are adults and one like lives with my mom and dad in the States. And then there's one that lives in Atlanta, the oldest, and I'm always constantly worried about them. And it's just, it's just all sorts of stuff, but it's been really good. You guys, I'm so grateful. And honestly, I think it was because of my depth here and now, and then I'll start reading some excerpts in just a moment, but I have to say now, I'm not the first one in the know of what's the latest decks coming out. I used to try to be that person, that YouTuber, but now I have no desire to be the first. I like actually saying, okay, what decks um, I'm called to and what decks really speak to me and what decks really belong in my collection. I'm now much more thoughtful. And like I said, that was what spawned the inspiration for the, ch the course that I created that I gifted to the community because I know a lot of us struggle when we're new to collecting or when we've been collecting a while and we're like, what the hell are we doing here? So my death year, let's talk about it. Death year 2020. So I did a journal entry reading um, from January to June, probably I think it was July when I published that video. And so now I'm going to pick up where we left off and I'm not going to talk about so much or I may talk about it. Maybe if I have to split this video up, I might. But um, the I might save the January to June for another time. I won't. I'll stop at December 25th is what it looks like the last entry for 2020 is for me. And the reason being is because I initially started with a one year death year of going deep with my decks that I already own, not trying to add to them. I had certain rules and stipulations for how I can add decks. I will link all of those related videos in the description box below so you can see what I'm talking about. But I decided to extend my depth year from one year to 18 months to June of 2021. And I had wanted to do that early on, but I was like nervous about it. But what I ended up realizing is that I was basically in a low by 2020 and then I'm 
more into a no buy in 2021 to be honest with you and it's because of all the logistics of trying to get a deck from let's just say the united states to an island not as easy as i thought it would be but whatever i think that's good for me so i knew that that was going to be happening but even before that i knew that was going to happen anyway that i was going to probably have all the decks i really wanted and it's true there's only two decks that are heavy on my mind that i'm considering getting and i've decided to tie it to a reward of something that i'm going to do for myself you know that i will reward myself for getting one of the two decks so we'll see or maybe both decks just depending on if i really get everything accomplished so i'm just saying all that to give you the background you gotta have the background of the depth here so we'll start with some excerpts here and then if i feel like the video is going too long i'll pause and then we'll resume and do a part two and so forth if necessary so let's go back so we're gonna pick up on my journal entry of june 5th 2020 and so this is just my depth year analysis notes where I said, okay, I had decks purchased in 2016 and the total amount I had spent then was $146.67. And that was 10 decks, I think I wrote here. 2017, there was 37 decks. 2018, 49 decks purchased per year. 2019 had 49 decks purchased per year. And at this point of recording, it was 2020, I had purchased nine decks, which one was a replacement. But I didn't have the dollar totals like I did for 2016. I was supposed to go back and do that. I didn't do that. Sorry, guys. That'll happen sometime in the future. Um, so I just kind of gave some notes and details because I think I was planning on including that in a video. And let's see what I put here. Okay, and I also did a depth here on books and crystals, although books had a loosey-goosey rules and things, so I was able to kind of justify almost every book purchase I made. Crystals, I was really good. If I had to rank myself with crystals, like decks and books, crystals was number one in terms of abstaining from making purchases because I have so many of them. I had to sell a lot of them, by the way, before I moved or relocated. But many of them are either on their way to me or they came, like the ones that are moderate size, not my big, beautiful geodes and things. Books um, were like easy because I had so many like caveats to my rules, but decks, I would be moderate. So number one, I was really strong with crystals. Number two, books. Number three, decks. Or maybe decks and then books. Decks and books are neck and neck. All right. So let's just read a few excerpts, a few sentences. It says, I fought the urge to buy some new crystals yesterday. I need to be strong because I'm thinking about downsizing to the point where Wei, Wei is my husband, and I can sell or rent our home and live part or full time in a tiny home. So I've been watching a ton of YouTube channels um, on tiny home living and etc. So that was the direction I thought I was going on for a long time, for years actually, until I came up with this fabulous plan. Um, oh, and so I said, this will be, this will free him from working all the time. My husband was working 70 plus hours a week uh, when we lived in the States. And then I could focus on my business. My priorities are shifty and changing, um, especially since the boys don't live here anymore. My sons are adults, so they're young adults, but they don't live with me. I mean, even when I lived in the States, my middle child, who's an adult now, he would kind of have his time between myself and my parents' house. And, you know, he just, he's, almost now has enough save where he's moving out period so it was just like I was starting to have partial empty nest syndrome going on I want to be mortgage free and and I put however spirit provides that for me 
So that was June 11, 2020. Oh, June 12, 2020. I say, I'm going to break my depth here and get the Afro Tarot by Jesse Jumanji. I am in love with this tarot and it speaks to all the African, African blood in me. It will cost $73 with shipping. So I'm going to pause there and let me tell you that I am so glad that I broke my depth here and got that deck. That deck has been magical for me and I love it and I'm glad it, I have it. There was only a handful of decks, I think like maybe 25, maybe 30, I mean, that might be overestimating of the decks that I brought with me from the United States to the Dominican Republic and the Afro Tarot was one of them. I love that deck. So I'm gonna see if there's anything here. I mean, let me know. It's, it's a glorious deck. Um, let's see what else we have. I'm not gonna talk about. I have a. I have entries in here about um, the Bone Stone and Earth Flesh deck, which I have. That also came here. Um, towards the end of its journey in terms of creation and being birthed into the world. I end up noticing some things with the, um, I don't know, with how, because it, it took years for it to finally get to our hands. And so in the Facebook group, there was a lot of discourse and issues happening between people who had backed that deck um, or supported it, not necessarily backed it because it wasn't a Kickstarter or Indiegogo deck. It was a deck that had a pre-order on Etsy. So I have some entries here, but I think I am going to reserve that because I, I'm not gonna talk about it. Um, you know, it, this particular entry is June 13, 2020, and it speaks to Avalon making an apology to folks. And I know people have mixed feelings about that apology. I wrote here that I felt like it seemed heartfelt. I could feel what she, where she was coming from. And I have to admit that that was a saving grace for me for the deck because I worried that because of all the discourse that was happening in the Facebook group and elsewhere, um, that I was gonna have a weird feeling towards the deck. So. I don't have a weird feeling towards it, by the way. I, I love it. I don't really use it. And I'm sad about it because the box, which I actually really like, um, is at my parents' house. I did not ship it. It stayed there. I have a beautiful bag, a beautiful suede bag for the Bone Stone and Earth Flesh Tarot that I keep in it. I don't even think I brought the guidebook. I think that stayed also in the States when I'm supposed to go and collect it. Between Somewhere between like summertime and wintertime, I'm supposed to travel back to the United States, but we are building a little tiny home in the Dominican Republic. And I want to be here to monitor that and to make sure everything's going smoothly with that. And then I'll go and visit my parents and collect my ducks. Um, so this is a good stopping point for part one of this video because I don't want these videos to go too long. I want to give nice little spaces. So we'll pause here and then I'm going to just keep going and reading some excerpts. Like I said, I kind of did a stop here because, you know, the bone stone was something that I did uh, per, like do the pre-order back in... Like the first time they went through was like, I don't know if it was June. I can't even remember. It was 20, early or like mid 2017. We'll just say mid 2017. So it's 2020 that I'm putting that entry in. And so I have a lot of different feelings that I'm not going to bore you guys with because I don't necessarily feel that way now. But what we'll do is we'll pause here and we'll move on to part two where I'd read more excerpts from my little journal, my depth year journal. And I'm also mentioning that I'm writing in it now. I have a journal entry as of a couple of days ago, but I'm not going to also read anything from January to now because we'll save that for the final leg of my depth 
time journey. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Join me for part two in this video. I'll be back.